Yes, big up, people. Hope you're well. Listen, thank you, everyone that watched This Is London. This Is London has now taken you over to this show, which is, of course, the Arsenal Roundabout. If you didn't see This Is London, Guna Lee was getting a cooking, man, off of D, Lawless and Don. It was not good, man. I have actually felt sorry for him. I had to stick up from at one stage. So make sure you go check that one out on This Is London. Uh, we're talking all things Arsenal here for another Arsenal Roundabout show. It's myself, it's Egal, it's Kenny Ken. And this north side, and we have got Brandon, who's going to be jumping on very, very soon. But he's literally just finishing up at work. So it's going to be us five chatting to you lot about the Arsenal. Make sure you do me a favour and smash a like on this video and subscribe. Later on, you're going to be redirected over to north side. So make sure you're over there towards north side. He's going to be going on to his Barcelona watch along. Make sure you're following the Gal Talks Football and Kenny Ken, of course, uh, on Instagram as well. Make sure you check out our sponsors. We're going to be looking at some more prizes from Football Prizes, and they've done it again. Um, there's some unbelievable prizes here. Make sure you go over to footballprizes.co.uk. You've got a chance to win the hospitality tickets, two of them for Tottenham versus Arsenal, of course, at White Hart Lane, and an opportunity to win some uh, memorabilia there as well, only for free 95 So make sure that you are in it to win it. We've also got a Kevin De Bruyne shirt and a David Silva shirt for you Manchester City fans out there as well. And if you are a gooner like all of us, there's an unbelievable Thierry Henry LED real frame shirt. Make sure you're in it to win it. There's an unbelievable chance to win. Not just that, but a Patrick Vieira signed shirt as well, just for the cost of 3 95 And you've also got the Arsene Wenger 04 Invincible shirt, as well as Two more Invincibles, Freddie Lundberg signed shirt and a Gilberto Silva shirt. So please make sure that you're in that to win it. For the cost of just 3 95 it has to be worth a ticket and a chance to win it. So make sure you go over there. All football prizes, and they're now doing sports prizes here as well. There's signed memorabilia for Is boxing. today the cutoff? Darts as well. Say that again, bro. Is today the cutoff? It looks like it. Uh, today, yes, you're right. So you've got till 7.30, people. So let's literally get in now. You've got 25 minutes to get this uh Get this done. So make sure that you are in it to win it because this is an unbelievable chance to win some quality, proper Arsenal legends uh, as well. So make sure that you are involved. Let's chat. Uh, Igal, let me ask you this question that I was asked today. Was there a massive Arsenal fan overreaction at the weekend? If so, why? If no, then why? What's your thoughts, bro? I think there's a lot of overreaction over how difficult it is to get Champions League final tickets. I don't know about you guys, but I applied. I couldn't get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I couldn't man. get final tickets. Uh, but on the other hand, yes, there is. And if you actually look on my channel, I don't know. Did you guys get final tickets? I'm serious right now. No jokes. Like, I couldn't get any. I couldn't even apply properly. Like, I missed the deadline. But yeah, maybe uh, next I time I got to apply as a Dortmund fan, I might get one. Um, when it comes to the overreaction, I... I went so deep into it on my channel that at one point I was saying it's done. Next second, I'm saying it's still there. Very reactionary, including myself, including everyone, I'm assuming. It is very difficult when you lose in that fashion. There is a psychological element to football. And I literally went and I did a deep dive into the psychological element to football. There's a video on my channel right now called The Bottle Gene, The Arsenal Bottle Gene. And the reason being... I don't think it's just a situation where we look at the players anymore or the manager. I think the nervousness from the fans can be sensed over the last two home games. Why is it at home that we're so open defensively? Why is it at home that we're so much more nervy? But when we're away from home, you get the sense where the players are a lot more calm. Is it because they know that they have to be a lot more resolute defensively? Is it because they know that the, the nervousness from the fans, they can't feel that? They, they have a little bit more calmness? Personally, for me, I think the psychological side of the game, you look at how we celebrated before the game, before we even kicked the ball, and then you look over, you look over at the end of the game, and it's like it was all for nothing. So to me, emotions run high, and as a fan base, as players, as a manager, this – the psychological element of this game and Man City's history weighs heavy on our hearts and our own history weighs heavy on our hearts. So yeah, it's not over, bro, but it is, it is very, it is very much deserving of a reaction. But I think the reaction is more post-traumatic stress from, from the last 20 years. Mm, that's what I'm at. And Egal, I'll give you credit for one thing. You said Liverpool would crumble and it looks like they're going to. Uh, unfortunately, we decided to join them and not stick with Man City. Uh, Northside, let me come to you, man. Um, you won't mind me saying this. 
a lot of people believe that you're a bit over the top and overreactionary at times. Um, do you think there was an overreaction or is this just same old Arsenal saw this coming and that's why I'm angry type attitude? I think if they have not been old enough to experience already being a teenager at the time that we started declining and have been old enough to really understand what's been going on the last 20 years, I get why they don't get it. I get why they're not mad. If you've only joined the party, you've only seen Arsenal in their demise for the last five, six years when you've actually been able to assess football. I get, I, I can understand to a degree why you're not angry. You've never seen us great. If you've never seen us great, you don't get it. Some people just don't get it. Yeah, everybody has their way of expressing themselves. At the end of the day, I'm not English. So I express myself in a different way. I'm not English, so I come from a different culture. I've got my own personality and it may not be for everyone. Cool. I never... I never thought that the way I think or the way that I feel was going to be for everyone. I'm not trying to people, please. I'm just being real to how I feel. And the way that I feel is I'm annoyed because before we played Aston Villa, I said to my girlfriend, if Arsenal, if this manager gets us a major honour, I'm so prepared to say, you know what? I don't even care. Apologies, Mikel Arteta. You won me a major honour. I didn't expect it. Fair play. Fair play. I didn't expect you to do it. You did it. Fair play. I, I take back everything I said about you. But this manager's just proven me right. Again, on everything I said about him. We said before that Jesus isn't a gunman. We're getting proven right again. This manager, we talk about nerves and mentality. It's not just the players, it's the manager. Why would you change a system that's been working for you? For 18, 19 games, we were carrying Kai Havertz playing as a midfielder. You got a tune out of him playing as a striker. Why put him back in the midfield? We got, after the Liverpool game, we're smashing up teams. Defensively, we're looking great, yeah? People told me before that, that Zinchenko is pivotal to the way that we play football. Creating chances or defending without, without Zinchenko in the team. You revert back to playing Zinchenko in the team. You revert back to playing him in, his, in a position that's not his. You make certain players accountable and not others. Saka can drop a stinker, never get subbed off. Never get subbed off. Rice can drop a stinker, doesn't get subbed off. You've left us again in a position where we have to play Gabriel and Saliba because you haven't recruited properly. We've got three players, Gabriel, Saliba and Saka. Regardless of performance, you won't drop them because you never went out there and recruited players that can compete for their position. Poor management. Poor management once again. Ben White is our best defender on the day against Aston Villa. Out of everybody, you sub him off. Stubbornness. Arrogance. This guy has not is not going to get us over the line once again. Mikel Arteta is way too one-dimensional. He has his favourites and he doesn't know how to coach us out of games when it goes wonky, when it goes sideways. I said this against Porto. I said it before Porto and I'll continue to say this. This manager has one way of playing football. And outside of that, he's not the guy. You're bringing on ESR that had a great game against Luton. You give him no minutes and then when... When shit is hitting the fan, then you're thrown on ES ESR with 10 minutes to go. How is that great man management? How is that great management of your player? When shit hits the fan, you're then getting on Eddie and Ketia in the 87th minute to save your ass. A player that you know you don't rate anymore because you don't use him anymore. When people told me to apologise to him after he scored three goals. People told me to apologise to Kai Havertz. And it's not just Kai Havertz, but he's part of it. Kai Havertz didn't turn up against Porto. Havertz didn't turn up against Bayern Munich. Everything that's been said about this team is all unraveling from all the top gooners. We've got a bench that can do a job. No, they can't. They can't save us. When the ship is sinking, they can't save us. We've got striking options, but none of them are goal scorers. Oh, but Zinchenko's pivotal to the way we play football. No, he's not. He's a liability. He's a liability, bro. Everything we've been saying, we needed to do more. No, just back the players. Just back the players. They can do this. They can do that. Jorginho, look at the experience. What experience, bro? What experience? It's not just this game. It's a buying game as well. We are being proven right on everything that we said about this club. And I'm not even, I'm not even angry anymore. I'm disappointed. I don't even have the energy to shout anymore. I'm just annoyed. I'm sick and tired of saying the same thing. Everything that we've said needed to be addressed is now biting us in the ass. Biting us in the ass, bro. So people say it's an overreaction. No. Yeah. 
in a way, it's been vindicated and everything that we told you needed to be addressed. And people wanted to put their little sunglasses on and tell us, no, everything's fine. Everything's rosy. Don't be toxic and negative. It's not toxic and negative to give criticism. Constructive criticism and things that need to change. At what point, at what point will people, will Arsenal fans see this? Everything they told us that was fixed is all crumbling. The mentality. You can't tell me the mentality's changed. When they told me, what do you think about Arsenal now? I told them I care about the 7% that we came up short last season, which is the crunch end of the season. Then I'll believe. What's happened this season? Yeah, we were sourcing blitz in teams. The problem with this football club is every time we must win, we don't win. In the last 20 years, as soon as the pressure's on, that is when we collapse. I've seen this is the thing that happened with Arsenal year in, year out. I've seen us bottle league titles, then all of a sudden we're back to sourcing. We're back to playing great football. Once we're mathematically out of it or we're not winning it, Arsenal starts sourcing again. This club has had a mentality problem for 20 years. So listen, people want to say it's an overreaction. I'm sick and tired of saying the same old story and the same old ending to every season for 20 years. I'm bored of it. I want my club to win. So if people think that's an overreaction, then that's on them. Well, listen, Kenny, let me come to you on a couple of things that Northside's brought up that I do agree with 100%. Saka, Erdegaard, Saliba, Rice. No replacements for them whatsoever mm. to anywhere near their standard. That's facts mm. for me. When Rice comes off, we don't have a baller like him. Erdegaard mm. came off and it was actually embarrassing how bad we were. Saka, definitely we don't have anybody there. He does mm. not trust Reese Nelson or anybody to go out wide like Jesus. And I think with Saliba we saw last season, we clearly don't have a replacement, right? That's one thing I agree with Northside on. Yeah. The other thing, maybe people think this is unfair, but I said this before the Bayern game and before the Villa game. I said, these are two huge games. This mm -hmm. season alone, forget last season, season before, forget Arteta's reign, Wenger's reign, George Graham's reign. This reign, this season, right now, we had to win at the following places for us to be given a huge statement. The Etihad, we drew. Anfield, mm -hmm. we drew. Villa Park, we lost. St. James Park, we lost. Stamford Bridge, we drew. North London Derby at home, we drew. Liverpool in the FA Cup at home, we lost. West Ham and Fulham, you can say, but they weren't massive games, but of course they're a disappointment. And Bayern Munich at home, without any away fans, we didn't win. So that's yeah. 10 opportunities that Arsenal have had just in this one season that we haven't been able to get across the line. And that is for me, not because we're crap, not because the manager ain't good. There's a mentality issue at this club. There must be. And tomorrow night is going to prove it because there yeah. is an unbelievable opportunity for Arsenal to get back onto yeah. the winning ways and the back onto the side of saying, do you know what? That was shocking against Villa. But we've gone out there and we've beaten now a Bayern Munich side that no one gave us a chance to do. But I don't have the confidence that we will, Kenny, because those opportunities that I've just reeled off have all proven that we haven't been able to get across the line again now. So I think it is fair for that comment to be made, can Arsenal get across the line? Is there a mentality issue? When it matters, can Arsenal turn up? I don't think it's fair for people to come at Northside for that question. I really don't. Mm. Kenny? Well, you're comfy, right. Um, the problem is, is that what we've seen um, in the last um, week or so, you, you take away Brighton, which is a fantastic performance. We've been tested in ways we haven't really been tested since probably since the 31st December when we got to play Fulham. Since then, we've been out playing out of our skins. You know, players have come out fresh, refreshed, played really, really good football. But I've been saying it for a long, long time. Two things I said in on this show predominantly there's no margin for error. Hence the fact that when we do drop point, when we do lose to Aston Villa, Man City get in front, you know, that psychologically we think, well, here we go again. You know, we're not going to, you know, win these games. Another thing as well is that as lovely as it was and as lovely as we, the fact we got some beautiful goal difference, the fact is, is that not every team we're going to play in the business end of the season are going to be like West Ham, Sheffield United and, um, you know, Burnley. And that's the thing. I've said consistently, Bayern Munich are not those teams. Aston Villa weren't these teams. And what I meant by that was not a disgrace against the players. The fact is, is that in those two games, we were tested in a way. We haven't been tested since Fulham away. For a start, you look at Ast um, Bayern Munich, our fullbacks actually had players who ran at them. Kivior, the warning signs for Kivior was um, 
illuminated when Concy Shao gave him a going over. We never heard that from him. So he said, Kivy or Kivy, you're well played. He's a good, um, you know, um, left back. He's better than Shinchenko. But when he played against, um, when he played against Sane, got absolutely ripped to pieces. When he tried to give him a bit of room, got ripped to pieces. When he got tight, he got ripped to pieces. And then you look at our set of halves, the set of halves that we've been praising a long time. For a lot of times um, during that um, period, they weren't tested the way Kane tasted them. The way, you know, first, if Kane didn't just get back into them and actually played on the shoulder, but, you know, backed into our defenders, he, he was able to win a lot of those battles. Plus, when he dropped into the midfield, he sprayed his passes. We haven't dealt with that. We dealt with that. So we've based, you know, the credibility we've given to our team on performances in the league, where which I've said we're built for. So what I'm, what I'm really going to say is, is that I don't think it's a mentality problem at all. We're just not as good as we think we were. We are. And that's not a disgrace because we're always going to have this problem unless Arteta fixes a certain situa- certain parts of the team. For instance, until he fixes that left-hand side, we're never, ever going to win major trophies. For instance, you've got a left, you've got a centre-half playing left-back in Kivio and you're saying his next big thing is sliced bread. He's played against a proper, proper, you know, inverted winger and he struggled because he's not a proper left-back. Then you've got the Martinelli situation where he's in and out of form, but he's in the team predominantly for his pace. If you don't get the ball to him, he's a waste of space. So that area, again, you've got to look at it. And then you've got to look at the the forward situation as well. Yeah, we scored brilliant, you know, you know, multiple goals in this league, and that's brilliant. But in these key games, the business end of the season, our forward's been found wanting. So that's another area. And then another area which not people don't want to talk about is the midfield itself. It looks good on paper, but against proper teams that can dominate possession and pass the ball, we struggled. You know, Bayern Munich illuminated that. All right, we, we got away with it in Man City. We actually created a better chances. Bayern Munich eliminated that. And Villa, Villa, you know, you can't say Villa didn't deserve their win. You know, they in possession, they were fantastic. Watkins back to their defenders. And when Bailey came on, he, he, he ruined um, Sinchenko. So these are areas where, you know, it's not really... An, Overreaction is actually a reality check, and I think that's what hurts the fans a lot because we've gone from you know euphoria believing that we were the team possession, obviously because we had the goal difference, thinking we're going to go and win it, but the margins were always fine. And if we did flounder, then it's confidence is going to be on the floor. But I think confidence has been a bit on the floor since the Bayern Munich game because it was a reality check, and we were lucky to get 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 sunk out of it. And I think that's the situation. Then you've got another situation where I'm not making excuses. I'm just talking footballing facts. Declan Rice looked shagged against Bayern Munich. He certainly looked shagged against uh, Villa. Saka looked shagged. In fact, a lot of the players are are shagged. And you're relying on Thomas Partey, who hasn't played all season, and he looks shagged because he hasn't had enough games. So basically, we picked the wrong time to um, lose confidence because we're playing against decent teams and real who test us or we failed those tests. Plus, we've got players who are, who are not fitting up. And then you've got the bench. You know, I think if Arsenal want to challenge next season, he needs to... And if you want to take in FFP into consideration, eight players have got to go. He's got to get rid of eight players. And some of those players are going to be players you don't want to know. You, you, you're not going to like because we've got to get money in to get players in who can... So he can fix our left-hand side, get them in a decent midfield that can cope when they don't have the ball and then get a forward. These are decisions that Arteta's going to make because what's going to happen is 93% of the season, we're going to look a million dollars. But when it gets to the business end of the season against better teams and against pressure games, we're not going to be able to compete and we're going to have the same situation we had last season. I promise you that's going to happen until he fixes it. And he's had enough time to do it. The warning signs were last season, he didn't do it. And then the same thing. Stop c- coming out with rubbish that our squad group is, um, you know, is good enough um, to compete with Man City because it isn't. You look at the opposite of Man City, man. Liverpool. Their squad isn't as good as Man City's, but the players that came in and they, until um, the Crystal Palace debacle, they were playing. They actually got the results because they gave some, gave every inch of their ability. We haven't got players that can do that, and that's the thing. We're gonna. We, I do think that. Kenny, you know, I disagree. 
we well, might disagree, but Liverpool, I'm just, I'm just disagree, but I'm Liverpool just telling you don't have the players. Liverpool I'm not talking about, I'm talking about Arsenal. Like, I'm just talking about Arsenal now because as much as people, as much as you writ off, writ off Liverpool, they're in the same situation as us. They had no margin for error because we were on the equal points of Liverpool. And let's face it, when you've got Man City on your coattails, you've got no margin for error. And, and that's and that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying Liverpool are better than Arsenal. I never said that. What I'm saying is about Arsenal. Forget, all right, I shouldn't have made it to Liverpool because that, that's No, because it seemed like you were bigging them up. No, 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 right. it's, 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 it's a distraction. But my point hasn't changed. That left-hand side, the midfield and up top, we're not going to win anything until we sort it out. So next season, we're going to have the same conversation where we're on the cusp of lifting a trophy and then it will let us down. That squad we got is too thin. It was too thin last season. It's it's nothing changed. And that's why we're frustrated. We're not having frustrated and we're angry at the manager because it's not personal. I don't know Arteta. I'm not saying I'll take her out because, you know, I don't like him. I didn't want him. I'm, I'm questioning him because he hasn't fixed the problems because the ingredients for us to win big trophies, he's he's not eradicating these faults. And he ain't going to do it next season. Hence the let fact me, that we've got a conversation about her in and out. Let me, I understand, I appreciate and understand your frustrations, Kenny. I do. And like, where's well, Northside? Before I bring you back in again, I'll get Brandon to come in because Brandon, there was something that I'm going to start in this chat. So I did start in the chat from Jonathan. Uh, the whole left side is a mess. Left back, left centre, mid, left wing, always changing. This is absolutely facts for me, right? And this is mad because when you bring up stuff like this, people think you're bringing it up because you've lost a couple of games. It's actually the opposite, man. I was bringing this up before. The left-hand side is nothing like on the right. The right-hand side, we know it's Saliba and Ben White. We know it's Erdogan and Saka. On the left, other than Gabriel, I've no idea who our left back is. At left centre mid, it changes pretty much every week. If it's Rice at eight, if it's Havertz at eight, if it's Vieira at eight, if it's Smith Rowe at eight, and left wing, I thought it was Martinelli, but it looks like it's either going to be Jesus or Trossard half the time, and Martinelli now sort of comes on or starts and comes off. So I think that's fair. I think the whole left side has been a little bit shaky this season, and we knew our first 11 last season. Everybody could name it, whether you were a Chelsea fan, West Ham fan, or Arsenal fan. You knew what the first 11 was. I don't think we do now. Now, some people would say that's better because it means we've got better strength in depth and we can rotate it more. That's cool. I'll hear that. But I'm not hearing that some of these players don't deserve some of the criticism because I saw Zinchenko have one of the worst games that I've seen in a long time this weekend, right? And then I had to look back and think, when does this geezer actually played well for us this year? And it was Burnley at home. That's it. There's not been another game. This guy has been fantastic for us. So I'm just questioning where the uh, where Arteta's head was at by playing Zinchenko and then leaving him on for that long, dropping Havertz back into midfield when it weren't working in September, or October, November or December, and then having no real plan B when things were going wrong. There's question marks there, Brandon, for sure, bro. Yeah, uh, it's, it's pure arrogance, bro. That's what it is. Stinky arrogance from the manager. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why this guy is so arrogant. Right, because we know managers that are arrogant. Pep Guardiola is a bit arrogant. Jose Mourinho is a bit arrogant, or very arrogant, should I say? But the difference between them and Arteta is they back it up by winning. Yeah, they win trophies. Arteta is the most arrogant manager in world football that does nothing to back it up. He makes the wrong decisions at the wrong time, and you look. This is capitulation again. Yeah, for the third season in a row at the same time in the season as well. April, every single time, April. Yeah, April comes, Arsenal fall off a cliff. That's what happens. And the reason is, is because we're too emotional, far too emotional. And that stems from the manager as well. You know, I blame him for the Aston Villa defeat because he, ch he changed far too much. There's no way Kai Havertz should be playing in midfield when he's dropping stinker after stinker in that position. We finally found a position for him where he's, you know, semi-decent and we've been getting the best out of him. But we decide to play him in the position where he's failed since he's come at Arsenal. That didn't make no sense to me. I said prior to the Bayern Munich game when it was announced that Zinchenko was fully fit again. If this guy starts any of our remaining fixtures, forget about winning trophies, Arsenal fans, because this guy is an absolute liability, right? And the thing is, is 
now people are telling me, well, it's on the manager because the manager is asking Zinchenko to invert. That's why he's never in position. Okay, cool. Well, when Zinchenko was out and Ben White was the one inverting, I never see Ben White on the left wing like I saw Zinchenko on the right wing for the first goal. So that tells you everything that you need to know. Yeah, this guy doesn't really know what he's doing. Mikel Arteta is so obsessed with having the majority of the ball, you know, suffocating teams, that in recent weeks it's become, I don't really know what's happened, really. He's reverted back to type. Everything that we was doing well since the, the break in Dubai, he's kind of reverted back to type just by bringing one player into the team, Zinchenko. You know, liability, Zinchenko. I don't know why he's still trusts in this guy because every single time we play this guy, you know, errors, errors occur, especially across that back line. And that's because he causes chaos. You know, every single Arsenal fan can see that Zinchenko playing at left back causes chaos because nobody ever knows where he is. Gabriel has to cover two positions, right? There are gaps that can be exploited just like Aston Villa did, right? So if we can all see that, why can the manager not see that? And I don't think it's the case that he can't see that. I just think he's so arrogant that he thinks he can get away with it. And at the end of the day, it's cost us again. You know, it's cost us. Because I don't think anybody really truly believes that Arsenal are going to win this league now. Let's be honest. Yeah, when Man City get themselves in front, they tend to stay there, especially with so little games left to go. You know, Man City don't tend to falter very much. And a lot of that comes from the manager. Because, again, we'll all sit there and we'll probably say, when you compare Man City's transfer window to the players that they let go, who are all top-class players, by the way, Laporte, uh, Mares, Gundogan, you know, players like that. And then they've replaced them with Doku, who's been absolute trash, yeah? St. Maximan, Mark II, basically. Kovacic, who's an okay player, but he's not fantastic. Nunes, who's, again, an okay player, but not fantastic. And Gvardiol, who's done okay for Man City, right? When you think about that, and the fact that they're still going to end up winning this league, it, it tells you everything you need to know. It's not even so much about the squad. It's not even so much about the ability of the players, because obviously the players that are named have ability, but they're nowhere near as good as Mares, Gundogan, etc. But it's the manager that carries them over the line every single time. It's the manager who's been there, done it, seen it, won it, yeah, multiple times. This guy don't panic under pressure. This guy knows exactly what to do when the pressure's there. Mikel Arteta doesn't, yeah? Mikel Arteta falters every single time. And that's why, in my opinion, we need to move on from him because I don't think it's going to change. People think it's going to change by us getting a striker. But like the comment just said, you know, that you just read out, it's not just a case of Arsenal getting a striker. We need to sort out the entirety of the left-hand side. I agree with Kenny Ken about midfield. Then you've got to look at the fact that, you know, like Northside pointed out, we've got Gabriel and Saliba, but who else comes in after that? You know, unfortunately, you know, with the timber injury, but who comes in after that? So then you've also got to look at potentially bringing in a centre-back as well. I don't know how you can have four and a half years in a job, have spent over £700 million, and we still have five massive holes in this squad. How is that possible? How? We should be one or two pieces away, minimum. What are the five places for you, Brandon? What do you reckon? Central midfield, left-hand side, yeah? Left-back is an absolute necessity because Kivior, he's, for as much as he's done okay, you're right, he's a centre-back, right? But also, at the same time, he doesn't have that turn of pace uh, if needed when he's coming up against, you know, a, a quick winger. We see that um, when he was up against Leroy Sane, who, by the way, has had one of the stinkiest seasons he's ever had for Bayern Munich, yet... He had us on toast in that first leg, by the way. Absolute toast down that left-hand side. We definitely need a striker. Yeah, that's been proven time and time again. And, you know, another case in point in the first half against Aston Villa. Don't think we did particularly bad. We just didn't take our chances like normal. Gabriel Jesus, you know, chance on a plate. You're a striker. 
So you tell us. You're the number nine. You're six yards out and you head it three yards wide. Are you serious? And everybody, what, and we want to, what, you want to pretend you're Brazilian, my friend? Yeah? I, I said it before when we signed Jesus, right? And I got a little bit of stick for it. I said, look, I like the Jesus signing. I think he's a decent player. But, and the gal might remember this as well, but he's not a gunman up front. He scored 14 goals in the Premier League for probably one of the best Manchester City sides we're ever going to see. And he's still only come up with 14 goals, right? So effectively, what we've done is we replaced Lacazette with Lacazette. So Jesus, for me, is Lacazette from the favelas. That's all he is. Yeah. Trossard, look, he, he has to finish that chance. He has to finish that chance. And then yeah, Saka, yeah. you know, week in, week out now, we're seeing him stink it out. But I also remember around this time last season, Bukayo Saka also kind of disappeared you know and I don't know that could be various different things I'm not going to sit here and say it's completely Saka's fault because again I think he's been well and truly well and truly flogged by this manager yeah yes and the worst thing that we've ever done for Bukayo Saka is not provide him adequate competition as soon as when we signed Reese Nelson to a new deal in the summer I was fuming with that because I knew that this would end up being the situation. Bukayo Saka plays 90 minutes, week in, week out, week in, week out, week in, week out. And then it reaches this point in the season and he's knackered. He's knackered. Yeah? He's limping off. He, he's probably playing through some sort of injury. I know most players do play through injury anyway, but he probably is trying to play through some sort of injury. And he's supposedly our best player in this team. Well, surely... Surely you want to nurture that player. Surely you want to, you know, make sure you can get the best out of him at the business end of the season. Instead, what we've done is we've flogged him all season and now it's the business end of the season. We're, we're seeing the stinky performances from him. And I, again, I blame the manager for that. I blame the manager. So, you know, for me, I think you have to move on from Arteta. Um, we may end up winning something. Who knows? Yeah, we may end up turning up to Bayern tomorrow and, and, and absolutely ripping them a new one. But, you know, I'm just dreaming it. I'm dreaming it, to be honest with you, because I don't think, I don't see that happening. I don't see that mm. happening. It's interesting, man. Listen, I appreciate all your points as well. Gal, I want to move on to tomorrow night, but I want to let you come can back. I, can I just say one thing well. quickly? Yeah, yeah, we, on, addressed, man, we addressed a lot of points. Um, you guys, you guys, based on what you've said, you're basically saying Mikel Arteta is a miracle worker. Because Brandon's pointing out that he has all these issues with the squad. Northside's pointing out all these issues with the squad. All these issues with the players that we have to our disposal. But yet we're competing in a three-horse race with two managers who have more experience and have been at the top level since Mikel Arteta was still at PSG as a football player. We are here, sitting here. We were top of the Premier League table, yes, just a couple of weeks ago. And now we're th we're second. We're still two points off top. There's a lot of football to be played for. There's a lot of football to be still played. But you guys are sitting here giving me concession speeches. I'm sorry. The same people who are sitting here talking about mentality and winning mentality are the same people showing a weak mentality and a psychological uh, inferiority to Manchester City. This, this is what Manchester City has done to the Premier League. As fans, we now, just because we've given them a sniff, you, you all genuinely believe there's no chance we're going to win this league. That's what it is. All of you guys are sitting here and you don't believe. You're sitting here like it's a funeral. That's what you're no, no, no. Yeah, no. So, sorry, to stop. no. Sorry. No, it's not. In fa fact, is a couple of weeks ago, we were playing really well. And you react to the performances. We're not reacting to, we're not reacting to the fact that, you know, you know the results. It's the performances. And it's the and it's the body language as well. I was there on Saturday. You're reacting I'm, to one performance or two? No, I'm reacting to. I'm, I'm reacting to. Look, the fact is, if if we if we lost those two games, if, or so if we drew that game, and the performance levels were there, and the problems that the opposition haven't haven't posed weren't there, I think yeah, all right, no problem, we can get back to this. But the fact is, against Bayern, 
We struggled. That's just facts. That's not slag. That's not being defeated. It's what you see with the eye test. I was at the game. We struggled in those areas. I pointed out against Aston Villa. Were you expecting us to wipe out Bayern? No, I didn't. The same arrogance you guys talk about. Once again, a lot of Arsenal. Let me let me finish. A lot of Arsenal fans are over optimistic because they looked at what happened in the Bundesliga, and I was trying to say that it's a different competition. That Bayern still have great players, and we we looked at all the performances we had in the league, rightly so. Even though I was saying we're more built for the league than the, the, the um than the Champions League, and I say it's not going to be as easy as you think. But the fact is. After we after we started real well against Bayern, we scored a good goal. When Bayern got themselves in the game, we struggled. That's not being defeated. It's just what we. It's... Oh, did we lose him? No, oh, I think we've lost you, Ken. Do, do, do you know I, I, just, I just want to come back to my point because I didn't really get to put a bow on it. We've started off 2024 so well. Mm. Off the back of those poor results, we've really regrouped and got ourselves back into it and everything. And we've now been top of the table. We've we've had our good times, right? We 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 had a good peak. Now, if you guys are telling me that the decline's here and everything's done and you're giving up with with six games to go, you're just as bad as some of these players that that you that you've been criticizing. If you're if you have the arrogance to think that we're going to blow out every single team and we're just going to have every game be an easy result, you're just no, as arrogant no, as Mick Gard- No. Well, one second, one second. But one second, I'm just making my point. If you're going to call Mikel Arteta arrogant for his decision making, mm-hmm. the way you guys are thinking coming out of some of these bad results, there's a level of arrogance and superiority that you have in your own hearts about these teams. And the reality is any team can catch you on a bad day. It's how you recruit. It's how you recover. This team has shown me this season that they have a really solid defense. They have a better attack. And yes, there might be holes. But all I'm saying is we do not lose faith in a whole season off the back of one bad result in the league Pick and out. a draw in the Champions Pick League. Out. And by the way, yes. the draw in the Champions League was against a Bayern Munich team that has six mm-hmm. Champions Leagues. We have to go to their house and all we could know is we could go and win tomorrow. If we lose, then you can come back to me and say, oh, we're out of another competition. I'm going to do that though. The, the majority of fans made Arsenal the favourites. Everyone in this country, all the respected pundits in this country said that the only team that can stop um, Man City for retaining the Champions League is Arsenal. They put it wasn't us who put um, Arsenal pedestal when it came to buy a minute. It was a lot of people. A lot of people and people exactly. looked at the form. This is facts. It, no, it, but wasn't, not, actually, it wasn't us. It wasn't us that was saying that Bayern Munich were washed. It wasn't us that said teams like Porto were not going to respect them in Europe. It wasn't us that said it doesn't matter that we replaced. We got another striker that it isn't a clinical goal scorer to get us over the line. It wasn't us, yeah, that was bigging up the controlled system at the start of the season, saying that oh, this new system is going to get us over the line. This fan base has overgassed this team, telling us that we got world class players. But when we're in, when we're in trouble and when we're in need, they don't show up. When the system okay. isn't working, no, they no, don't no. show up. Hold on, let me land my point. You're talking, I never said anything. I was talking more about the manager and the players. Now you're talking about the fan base. The other side of the coin, the fans that are like you, you're the ones that are doing starting 11s with Real Madrid. You're the ones that are talking down Bayern Munich and their heritage and comparing what they're doing in the league and saying that they're rubbish. Even though we saw that with Porto, they're third in the Portuguese league, yeah? Yet we stumbled across getting past Porto. And they're third in the Portuguese league, a league that none of you top gooners would respect and would call the Farmers League. You guys are the ones telling us that Zinchenko is pivotal to the way that we play football. You guys are the ones that were happy with the bench, saying that Reese Nelson re-signing his contract was a good deal. El Nene signing a re-contract is a good deal. Fabi Vieira, he's a he's a top talent. When I told you, you man don't watch the Portuguese league. You man are the one that told us to apologise to Eddie and Ketia. You man are the ones that told us it doesn't matter that Jesus doesn't score many goals. It's about what he does off the ball. When you man are quick to forget, you man didn't want Lacazette and Giroud, who had two seasons of scoring 16 goals in the league season and was still deemed not good enough. Why? Because of goal scoring. The last striker that we rated at Arsenal was Aubameyang, a player that was scoring 20-odd goals a season, getting golden boot with Harry Kane. You man are the ones that are telling us that Saka's world-class. So when we're in trouble, he needs to turn up because you've already put the world-class tag on him. You man are the one telling us, yeah, that we've got the signing of the season, Declan Rice. Well, we need you to turn up. We need you to turn up when our back's against the wall. Bayern Munich, we need to turn up against Aston Villa. These are pivotal games. You man are the ones that are telling us that our backline is the best in Europe. So when you're overgassing this team and putting them up on this pedestal that we are the best and we're incredible and we've been the best team this season, there is expectations. By what you man said, we are going to hold you to that. 
You man are the ones that said at the start of the season, we need to win a major honour. You guys said that. We must win a major honour this season. That was the majority of Top Gooners' prediction at the start of the season. We're holding you to what you said because if everything is amazing and all the players are incredible and the bench is happy and everything that me and, and, and Kenny and Potts has said is over-exaggeration and we're being over-critical, there is an expectation to deliver because by you gassing it up, this manager's underachieved because you gassing up this team means that the team's good enough. So don't spin it now and say, oh, it's a miracle work, what Arteta's doing. No, it's not, bro. No, it's not. Your man didn't say that with Brendan Rodgers at Liverpool. You didn't say it was a miracle work with Poch getting uh, Tottenham with a team that spent a fraction of the money that this manager spent and got to the Champions League final and flipping finished the season second. You never called it a miracle work then. So don't move the goalposts when it's Arsenal. You don't say that to the rivals. I, 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 to can I just jump in? I, 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 so I, I, please, don't, I, don't now try and, and start saying that we've got little... We've been real and we've stuck to exactly what the weaknesses are of this team. We have been ignored. So now that you're seeing it clear as day, crumble, why should we believe when the things that we had concerned about this team and this manager has not been addressed? Let me, let me let me just say this. Northside. The fact that the bench is still not good enough. The North fact that side. we don't have a focal point. And that first half was the best example that we don't have a killer. But everybody North told side. me that the goals can go round. That was the excuse. The goals can go round. Everybody can score. How come North we didn't side. score against Aston Villa? How come? How come you man told me that we North can score side. from set pieces? What happened to we'll, we'll score from set pieces? Really? Can I, can I, can I, can I say something quickly? Come on, bro. How can, you, how can you sit here preaching all of our flaws, but then say... The because I can't about getting over the line. One second, one second. I let you finish. How can you sit here and have the audacity to to have a laundry list of flaws with the squad and then say, oh, but yet it's the manager's fault for having these flaws when he's the one who's getting this team competing against Manchester City, who's considered the best team in the world and one of the best teams. I can in answer that. I can answer that. In addition to that. that I'm not. I, I, these are rhetorical questions. You don't need to answer. It. Then no, the no, next no, point. Answer. Then the next point. Then the next point <laughs> is. <laughs> the next point is. You guys continuously talk about mentality. You continuously talk about bottle this that high standards and and oh unrealistic expectations or players putting people on pedestals. You want to know something? I am holding everybody accountable. The manager makes mistakes. The players makes mistakes. And right now, as fans, you guys have a subconscious thing where immediately you go back to reset of wanting the manager out and not believing that this team can get over the line. It only took one heavy defeat for you to go back to your factory reset for a couple of years ago. Where is the level of belief yep. that this team instilled in you? Where Let me is the, this. Where is the support that you've been showing? Northside, Brandon, Kenny, Potts, I all believe all of you guys at some point this season believed we could win the league. And after yes. one after one bad result, you are now getting to the point where you no, are... No, 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 I have to say this, because the only person bottling it right now is you guys, because you guys are already giving it up to Man City. You are already saying Man City are the winners. You're already sitting here saying my team is not capable of doing it. You're already sitting here saying the manager who instilled this belief in the fan base and the players is not capable of doing yeah, it. Yeah, because when, when you, you don't have your trust, 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 when you've got a friend, they have to be a friend to have a friend. It's called building trust. When you've got a partner, they have to earn your trust. In every walk of life, there's trust that is earned. When you get a job, they trust you, but the trust is earned that you do your job. This manager has not done what we wanted him to do, which is why when we're crumbling now, we're not flip-flopping. We're sticking to exactly what we said. He hasn't addressed what needed to be addressed. So now that it's crumbling down, we're not surprised. What, uh, what about that do you not understand? Trust is earned, bro, not just given. You let need me, to perform. Me, you need to go over the line. Let, let me what? jump in as well. Let me jump in as well, because I want to rebuttal. No, 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 no. There, because, there's Egal, you just... Hang on, Egal, Egal. I need to point this out. Let, no, let me rebuttal to your point, my friend. It's your friend, subconscious. You... When, when you see an error, you go back to your subconscious and you think about the all the worst-case scenarios. This is what you guys are doing. It's not that yeah, you don't right. believe. Listen, it's that listen. immediately when you see a little hiccup, a little bit of issues, a little moment of a problem, a window that you cannot get through, you immediately say, you know what, it's done. Listen, firstly, firstly, Agal, right? Yeah, firstly, no disrespect, but you're talking shit right now, yeah? You really are. 
because okay so tell me what it is you can you can pick up this manager for getting us in a position all you like yeah but the reality of it is is the problems or the issues that are in the squad were caused by him yeah caused by him not recruiting in the right areas in the summer deciding to get Kai Havertz instead of a proper striker right but caused by him in the Aston Villa game by not playing yeah the players that have been doing it um since the turn of the year by deciding to play Zinchenko at left back for some reason by deciding to play Havertz um in the midfield for some reason yeah by deciding to bring on off Martin Odegaard who was probably our best player in that game you know these are all decisions that the manager has made so you have to hold him accountable to him, right? And the reason why, yeah, you would say we're being negative after one game, blah, blah, blah. The reason being, Igal, is because we've seen this for the last three years. Arsenal reach this point of the season and we fold, right? So, of course, we're going to sit here and go, well, that's it. It's done, right? But then it's up to the manager. It's up to the players to prove us wrong. But, of course, we're going to sit here very pessimistic about whether we can win this league when we're up against a Man City team that are a treble winning team that have won the last, what, four out of five Premier League titles? And now when they, tend to, when they get in front, they don't, they don't bottle anything. Man City have never, oh, really? ever got in front in a title race. Yeah, got in front in a title race with seven games to go and bottled it. Never. Have you, have you just made my point? What? My point, my point was Man City's pressure has subconsciously gotten you guys to already bottle the league mentally. No, no, I think it, it go, it go. You've been on every, every show I've been on since the turn of the uh, calendar year, 2024, you've been on. And you would have known that we, we were at a segment. I've been on your show as well. We've had, we've yeah. had some of the times we've had a segment where we say, how many points can our sort of fault the drop? And you know for a fact, oh, I've always said, Kenny, we lost you again, man. I think he froze. Come back, come back. Sorry. Go on, Kenny, go on, Kenny. Uh, can, you hear, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry about sorry about. And the reason why we said that is because of the because we got three two excellent managers and two excellent teams. And that it was neck and neck. That the reality of the situation is, is that if you do drop points, it's gonna be very hard to go and, and, and go and get back in that race, even though mathematically. You know, you can still do it. It's mathematically possible if you want me to change my word. The fact is, psychologically, everyone is thinking, oh, dear, we can't. That's a massive, massive flip up. And it's a big dent in our title hopes. Now, mathematically, we can win it. But you said yourself at, at, at half past six, when you did your action show, you awarded, you set the champers at, at East Manchester. All right. Tomorrow, the next day is another day. Tuesday's another day. That's fact. And you've gone back and said, yeah, you know what? What was I saying? But the initial reaction was that everyone was sending out cases, cases of champagne to East Manchester, you included. The fact is, it's not a diss on our Mikarte. It's not a diss on the, on, on the football club. The fact is, is that it's re reality because of the fact that we're in a tight championship race and that if you give a team with the most experience to win the title an inch, we, and let's not forget, we're not talking about the fact is Man City. Look at their fixtures. You look at their fixtures and you tell me where they're going to slip up. Will you, and I know you're going to say Spurs. So, all right, let's take out I, Spurs. I'm not even yes. going to say that. Going to I'm, I'm just going to say there's still a lot of hiccups in the road. Let's not, let's not worry about City. Let's focus on ourselves. We can only control our own destiny. So let's regroup. Go to Bayern, win that game, try to get further in the Champions League, then go to the Molyneux. And if you guys don't know, guess what? We actually have a small mental advantage. Before Man City play their next Premier League game, we play two. So we will be top regardless. We're great at controlling yeah, our own destiny. No, I'm just simply telling you guys what you guys don't want to really hear. The reality situation is mentally yes man city have an edge over us because they're controlled they're cool they're calm collective you spoke about emotions bro check your own emotions that's the real check your own emotions no disrespect pick up pick up no i don't know you gotta shoot and do your watch along no man. Disrespect, we'll but you, man. we need to pick check up, our bro. own emotions love 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 guys pick up, come on PSG. Sorry, man. Oh, have a good one come on, PSG. Sorry, no, come on. <laughs> 
I think I think what you're saying, Nigga, all right, listen, you have a right to still remain optimistic. We're two points behind, win the Champions League. Tomorrow is a massive game, which is what I want to come on to lastly before we close. But there is always going to be, until evidence provides or proves that Arteta can get us across the line, you're always going to get that in the fan base, bro. You're always going to get someone to say, just get us across the line. There's nobody on here that doesn't want that to happen, bro. There's nobody on here that doesn't want that to happen. You're on mute, Miguel. You're on mute. I can't, I can't, what do you call it, have an argument over their distrust in the manager. I can only have an argument based on what the team has shown me this season. And what they've shown me this season is that even with all the issues you guys are bringing to the table, they are there and thereabouts. And either you are either underrating this team or you're underrating the manager. Which one is it? Because it can't be, it can't be that they're both problems. No, it's just the fact that we've, we've seen the same thing happen as to what we did last season. You're, you're talking about we can only control our own destiny, right? We could only control our own destiny when we was eight points clear with eight games to go. And we, we faltered, right? That's what happened last season. This weekend, all we had to do was beat Aston Villa at home, at home when we have a very good record against Villa. I know Villa are fourth. I know they've beaten us once this season. I know it was going to be a difficult game. But you'd expect Arsenal to win that game at home, especially given the fact that Liverpool had just gone and lost as well. So there was an opportunity there for us to give ourselves a little bit of distance between us and Liverpool. Bearing in mind, like you just said, we have to play t uh, twice more before Manchester City even play a Premier League game. So had we won that game at the weekend, we, we had the potential of being, what, eight points clear? And Manchester City with seven games to go. And instead, what we did was we just we handed it back, back to them on the plate. That's what I don't like. The thing is, right, is if we don't win this league or if we didn't win this league because Manchester City or Liverpool or whoever it may be were just that fantastic and that brilliant that it was impossible for Arsenal to do it. Yeah. I'd, I'd be a bit more acceptable uh, or, or, or accepting of it. But the fact that we are the ones that keep faltering, we're the ones who were in control of our own destiny and keep faltering. That's where I have the question marks with the players, the manager, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why, I, you know, that's why I was, I'll always say until Mikel Arteta wins as something major for me, you know, and that has to be this season for me, you know, you got to move on from him. Sometimes you got. To, sometimes you've got to move I on. I don't think that's a logical argument, simply because uh, you are basically saying you don't want to. You don't believe in the manager anymore, but you never believed in the manager in the first place. So unless he wins, he's not going to breed. He's not going to breed any confidence into you. I'm confident that even if we don't win this year, we're still going to be there and thereabouts next season. And I've seen adequate improvement enough. For this manager to be in charge for another year. You've brought up the fact that we need five uh, areas to be fixed. Brendan, yeah. how can you say five areas need to be fixed, but at the same time, the manager is not good enough to win us the league? You clearly are saying the squad is not good enough, but yet you're also in the same breath trying to say the manager is not good enough. Make it make sense, bro. No, no, it's not even that the squad's not good enough. I think we have the players there to win the league. So I then why do we need so then why do we need five changes in the summer? Huh? You just said earlier we need five changes in the summer. Not not that we need five changes. I said we need five additions in the summer. Because so then, it's clear. How can, so then how can both co correlate? How can we have a team good enough to win the league but then have five areas that we need to massively address in the summer? It doesn't make well, sense. All right, all right, all right, all right, let's explain the situation. Last season when we did win the league, where 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 in a pro what what do you think cost us the league? What Last areas season, injuries, oh, injuries no, no, and a lack of experience. Take it, take it injuries because you can't just talk about injuries because you talk about injuries costing you the league, then that, then obviously the squad's not good. This was too thin. So if you get if you get injuries to key players and you and the player that is in that position isn't good enough, then the squad's thin in quality. So if you look at the situation, the things that hurt hurt, forget about. Um, you know, what happened um, before the turn of the calendar year. Let's talk about the situation now where it was always a margin of error in terms of, like, how many points we can drop. But if you look at the two games, look at the areas where, where we've got concerns. The left-hand side 
is something you've never once said that we were wrong about the left-hand side. You've never once corrected us and said we were wrong about the striking situation. You've what you've what you've gone down the road of is that you think we're attacking the manager and that he's not good enough to win the league. I'm and all I'm saying is that those areas of concerns, when it comes to the business end of the season, your squad helps you win the league. You know because players get tired, the pitches get heavy. Because that's what happens, right? And then you've got the cup competitions like Champions League and the FA Cup, you're still in it. And obviously you've got internationals because other you've got qualification um, um tournaments for you know major tournaments in the summer. So there's a lot of football being played. Man City do it better. The reason why we we're not guessing Man City on Pep Guardiola, they have managed to master the art of a squad to help them win compete at those levels. And we and that is why. They have that little percentage. And until we, you know, like I said, match them in that little percentage and even be a little bit better, then what will happen at this stage of the season when players get injured or players lose form and players get knackered, you're going to look at your bench and you think, right, you're, you, you're either going to, they're either going to be good enough to um, replace um, the players that are in, that who are injured or suspended, which Man City have, or you're going to have spare group. Square pegs round round holes. And I'm telling you now, square pegs round holes don't work. Because last year, when Saliba got injured, we had Rob Holding. That was costly, which means we should, which means you can't just rely on Gabri Gabriel on Saliba. This season now, if for some inane reason, we're talking about a right back come centre back being our, our saviour on the left. Make that make sense. He's only had two good games there, and all of a sudden. We're thinking, right, he solved the left back, the left back problem. Well, he's not a bloody left back. He's got injuries all season. So what was he doing in in, in January when we still got that problem down the left hand side? He's been trying to replace Martinelli since January last year. So that's still an issue. And I'm saying to you now, that's not a slag of the manager because I don't want him on the team. That's him identifying our problem that he thinks is going to cost him big two trophies, yet he still hasn't dealt with it. We're not the ones who who are, who've identified a problem. It's the manager himself. He doesn't play these players that like Smith Rowe on a regular basis. He doesn't look at Fabio Vieira. We're struggling for possession in two big caves. Fabio Vieira was bought for 35 million pounds. He didn't get on. He create, the problems. manager creates his own problems, Kenny. What? This is the problem. The manager creates his own problems. We're talking about the left. Yeah, well, no we're one talk, we're talking that, about man. the fact that we need five more additions. Why is that? These are all players that the manager has invested in. Yeah, these are all players that the manager is trusting in. Yeah, they just the Vieira one, you can't you, no one can tell me that was a good signing, man. No one no. I, I don't think anybody knew of anything about this guy, man. And that okay. it was a mad, mad signing. I don't really ask you guys a question though. Go on, nigga. What what do the signings have to do with the Aston Villa loss? We still have a good enough team to be Aston Villa. We made individual errors uh leading up to Three the loss. And and you guys were still saying we could win the league with this squad with those problems a couple of weeks ago. To me, to me, to me, to me, I've personally, no, I've me. always said Man City will win the league. Personally, I've okay, always said. Fair. Man City will have win have the you guys ever said Arsenal are going to win the league this season? Last uh, season, I did not this season. I said, I thought well, I said at one win. point that we could win the league, but I also said okay. prior to Bayern Munich, if Sinchenko starts any of our remaining fixtures, we're stuffed. Okay, so uh, I hear, uh, uh, I hear uh, the Zinchenko point, sorry, yeah. and I personally don't want to see Zinchenko playing for Arsenal Football Club again. I think that's one person who should. You've got personally a problem with that. He's going to have to play. He's going to have to play. He's going to have to play. He can. He can come off the bench. He doesn't have no, to be a starter. Right, 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 right. Make it, I see what you're saying that you, you you know you you're not a big fan of Zinchenko. I get that, but the areas I discussed earlier on about that problem in the midfield and the left hand side. You've still got the same problem if you can, play Kibio. Can I say this, though, Kenny? We're still going to be outnumbered in midfield. So Kenny. he's created a problem where he hasn't sorted out Kenny. that inverted back situation. You want to know something? Your yeah. The issues that are that you're bringing to the table are, are can be an issue that needs to be addressed throughout the season. We have found issues. We've had issues in the, throughout the season that we have addressed at times. For example, when Zinchenko first got injured, KBO came in. We somewhat solved that issue for a short term period. When we had an issue with with our attack, we kind of solved that issue later in the season with Havertz playing up top, and Mikel Arteta shouldn't have changed that versus Aston Villa. Now, 
one thing I don't want us to do, I don't want us to take two bad performances and turn it into what has been happening throughout the whole season and just use it as an example on why the manager should be sacked. I think the whole thing, why I'm pushing back so much this show and we've spent over an hour on one topic is because I don't like the conversation of Mikel Arteta out after two bad performances in a calendar year where we've been spotless. A title race against two teams that we can admit have better managers and more experienced managers than us. Also, a Man City team that we can admit is a better overall squad than ours and is better than our team. And we're still in the mix with them, continuously pushing them and showing that we're there. We cannot win the league in April. And yes, I, we can I, lose I, it. You, Adele, yes, we can lose it. We you. haven't I'm lost it yet. With you on the, just quickly, I'm actually with you on the whole car crash, Arteta are out, blah, blah, blah thing, because there's a long way for us to go still. We can still win the league. I don't think we will now. But we still win the league. We still win the Champions League, right? But you can't deny that if this comes crashing down again, that will happen. That is just what's going to happen, my friend. Until he gets across the line, everybody will question whether he can. That's just the way it is. And that's not believing or hope. That's just factually. Has he won us the title? No. Has he won us the Champions League? No. So that's always going to be questioned, bro. And I know that you like him and you like a lot of stuff. And you're right, too. He's done an unbelievable job in terms of getting us challenging again. There's no de denying that, right? But he has to get us across the line because we don't just want to challenge because we were challenging under Wenger, right? And under Graham and under all these guys. We need to win, right? And can this guy get us across the line? I can't honestly answer that with my heart and my head and say yes, yeah, gal, because I haven't seen it that he can. I'd love to say yes. I'd love him to. There's a lot that he's done that I love. But let me move it quickly before we close to tomorrow night. This is what my team would be. I'm going to ask you this for you, you free this. My team tomorrow night, a lot of people have said they're not too sure about this, but that's what I'm going with. Um, Raya, White, Gabriel, Saliba, Tommy Yasu for me. In midfield, Jorginho, Rice and Erdegaard. I haven't seen enough of party to think he's fit yet. And for me, I want to see Havertz up top, not Jesus, and then Saka and Martinelli. And then Jesus and Trossard are used as the subs and party if he's potentially fit enough. So let me come to you on that team, all three of you. Kenny, start with you. Right, my team is um, Raya in goal. Right back, Benjamin White. Setting her after Saluba and, um, and Gabriel. Tommy Asu is in a team. But I do worry that we're going to be short in midfield without an inverted player. But Sinchenko has played himself out of the team. I don't want Kivio there under no circumstances. That's nothing personal. He's going to get ruined by um, my guy, um, Sinai. Midfield, tricky. Because, you know, Rice and Odegaard, and then I'm R Rice and Odegaard, if Tom's party is fully, fully fit, he gets in my team all day long, but he isn't fit. So we're going to have to play with Jorginho and just pray. Unfortunately, I differ from you. I don't want Martinelli anywhere near that team. I, w I, w I want I want someone who's got the genesis quite or actually, you know, create something out of nothing. And I'll, I'll, I'll go with my um, Champions League man in the Trossard and I'll play um, Havertz up top. And I'll play Saka because, you know, Tross, Trossard for me, you know, has that genesis qua, I can get a goal out of nothing. And he's, he's, he is the person I probably trust the most to get something out of it. Martinelli, I'll, I've given up on him. I see pace. He hasn't learned. He's let, he hasn't learned. His head's still Dan. You know, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say it for, for, for another, another show, but nah. If you know he fluffed, he fluffed his audition when he played last week. I know a lot of it was the fact that we didn't have the ball, but nah, not for me, mate. Trossard all day long for me. Interesting, man. Brandon, what are you saying, bro? I think I agree with uh, Kenny on that one. I think I would go Trossard, Havertz, Saka um, as the front three. Um, midfield, I'd be half, I'd, I'd be half tempted to play Thomas Party. I know we haven't seen much of him, but we know that he will hold a position as well, but he can also go forward. I'd be tempted to play him with Declan Rice, try and not concede early, um, and then try and hit try and hit Bayern on the counter-attack. We've got to remember we're away from home as well. Their fans are going to be up for it. I'd probably go a little bit more defensive in midfield. You know, try and shut their midfield down a little bit. Try and shut Harry Kane down a little bit more because he seems to be the danger man, especially when he drops into midfield and starts spraying them balls. I'd probably go Rice and Party in midfield with with Odegaard in the tent. Um, mm. and the rest, the rest of the squad, I completely agree. 
completely agree. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? There's a few people that would switch a couple positions. Egal, what are you saying lastly, bro? For me, of course, uh, Raya, all those guys stay the same. The left back is the one where we need to figure out what we're going to do. I'm going to go Tamiyasu left back. Um, right, uh, uh, everything in the midfield besides the left midfielders is going to be the same. So Jorginho is going to be there, De uh, Declan Rice, Odegaard, Saka, Havertz up top. And then where I disagree with you guys is I actually play Martinelli. Yeah, same. I, I, I play Martinelli. And what I say is Martinelli is going to be the outlet. With Jorginho on the pitch, he kind of gives the same passes that Xhaka was doing, uh, releasing him last season. And yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Martinelli and I'm going to hope that we can utilize our wings in, in, in the counter. And I'm going there and I'm playing defensive. Shut up shop. Do not concede. At best, if you, count, if you get a goal, you sit on it for the rest of the game. Don't be super negative to the point where you don't attack at all. But we went to that Etihad and got a nil-nil. I want the same type of performance, but a little bit more cutting edge, hopefully, in the attack. And the reason why Trussard is on the bench, I can trust Trussard to come off the bench and, and have impact. I don't know about Havertz. I don't know about Jesus coming off the bench. But I know Trussard coming off the bench, he'll give me impact. So I want to have Trussard as an option off the bench instead of starting him where he can kind of somehow drift out of the game. And then at that point, he's useless. You almost want you almost want two Trussards, somebody like him that, that, can, that can play and start, but also you want him coming off the bench at the same time. So in that case, you're better off having him as an instant impact. And yeah, that's my team. I think my team is same as Dan's, right? Yeah, exactly. The same as mine, bro. Listen, I'm with you in everything you've just said, particularly about how we're going to close the show now, which is our predictions. And I am going to go 1-0 to the Arsenal. Old school, shithousery, proper defensive uh, uh, performance. And we nick it with a Gabriel set-piece header. I think it's going to be horrible. I think it's going to be nasty. I think it's going to be hostile, volatile. They can hurt us. And it might be foolish for me not to expect them to score because they got two at our place. But I think we're going to need a defensive masterclass. And I think that if we do get one and we nick that 1-0, I think, honestly, that will get a lot of credit back in the bank. And that's what I need to see happen. I don't care how we go through. I don't care if we go through on penalties. I don't care if we go through, it comes off the back of someone's backside in the last minute. I want to go through badly. So that's what I'm going for, man. 1-0 to the Arsenal. Old school. Brandon, what are you saying? <sighs> I think I think Bayern will score. I think they'll definitely score. They're at home. I'd like to say 2-1 Arsenal, but I genuinely think it's going to be a draw. I think it's going to be a 1-1. One, one. Um, and it will probably go to penalties. And then it's just a toss-up there between who goes through. Um, I'd probably argue that Bayern have the better penalty takers as well. So, yeah. I mean, hopefully, we, hopefully you're right, Dan. Hopefully we nick it. But I, 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 I see a draw in this game again. I see another draw. Mm. I think it'll be interesting. It's going to be horrible if it is, man. It's going to be horrible anyway, to be fair. Uh, Kenny, what do you think is going to happen, mate? Um, I got, I'm, you know, I'm, I always want to be optimistic, mystic, but I haven't given me much um, grounds for optimism. I've just got to be realistic. We'll score, but I think we'll consider, I think we'll be too much blind. I think this is uh, where where we are at. It's not I'm not going to be too upset because I do think that you know it is probably our level. It's probably our level. But that's I think maybe next season if we get better players, you know, get more balance of squad. I think we'll go further. Who knows? We might even win it. But I think this season I've always put more scope on us winning the league. I think that that has got to be more important. I still perversely think our best chance of winning silverware is still the league. Perverse, I know. Well, listen, we're not going to talk league. We're going to be talking Champions League because that is all that matters right now. One game at a time, like Mikel Arteta said. Although, I think he had his eyes personally on Wednesday. Yeah, Barcelona have just scored um, to go 1-0 up against PSG, which is 4-2 on aggregate, I believe. So, yeah, mm -hmm. interesting, man. Um, let's go for it. I would love to see 1-0 to the Arsenal tomorrow. I really bloody would, but let's see what happens. My thanks to Igal. Make sure you go over to Igal. On You're not going to take my prediction down? Oh, oh did I not shit. ask you? I'm sorry, bro. Nah, go for it. Like, it's it's sorry, like, no, you're asked, would it, mate? 
No, 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 please, no, no, please, no. yeah. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't even do it on purpose. I'm so sorry, mate. Go on. <laughs> I, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be. I think there's gonna be goals in this game. I'm gonna go two one Arsenal. And wow. and and my whole logic Love is, that. my whole logic is, you guys know Bayern. They have no Sane, they have no Gnabry, they have no Kingsley Coleman. They're gonna have to play youngsters. If their youngsters show up against us, you just they, gotta they, give them fair play. Also, as well. Just to add to your point again, they have no Alfonso Davis either. He, yeah. he's, he's out. No, no, but Alfonso Davis is actually not their best left back apparently this season. I spoke to a Bayern fan. He told me Davis, since he's been having his issues with potentially leaving to Real Madrid on a free, he basically has been out of form. It's Guerrero. Guerrero. Yeah, Guerrero's Guerrero. actually been yeah. solid. So mm. apparently he's really good offensively also. So he could be one we'll of those left backs. Tomorrow. <laughs> we'll find out tomorrow. Um, big up, Egal. Sorry, man, for missing you. Make sure you go over to Egal Talks Football, uh, please, people. Make sure you subscribe to him over there. Make sure you're following Kenny Ken on Instagram and make sure you're following True Gunners TV with Brandon's content as well. Make sure you like this video. What are we on to like? We've had well over 500 in here. We're not even on 250 likes. Come on, man. I only asked for 50%. Make sure that you hit the like button. Uh, 250 likes, please, would be amazing. Uh, and subscribe. We're getting very close to 20K, which is the next target. So please make sure you're part of that community. So please hit the subscribe button and like. Both those things are free and it means so much to the channel. We'll see you next time. Stay tuned because you'll head straight over to Northside's stream who's watching the game on the watch along. So make sure you do that. And we'll see you next time. Up the Arsenal. Latest, people.